So we can do a couple of different things. Um, we can just do a generic myofascial to triceps. Or we can add movement by extending the elbow, engaging the tissue, and then bending or flexing the elbow, pulling the muscle through the fascial sheath that I'm engaging. I'll disengage, extend, engage, and flex. Or we could do it with active movement, and I'll have the client extend their elbow. I will engage, and he'll flex, pulling the muscle himself. And I'm not worried so much about a dry glide up towards the shoulder joint. I want to be able to extend, uh, just engage and have the release come from him doing the work. Okay. So then we can bring the arm up on the table and I can do a myofascial. My right hand is just a mother hand. It's just because I'm not going to do any spreading because I would just be spreading on the ulna. So the working hand will be my left hand in this case. And what I'm going to do is just work across the forearm. Pressure okay? It's great. Or I can hold the wrist, and I'll hold it proximal to the wrist joint so I don't traction it, and use my left fist and go up the forearm. And I'll use the inside forearm, in this case my left hand, uh, so I'm not working across my body. And you'll see that I get a decent engagement, at least I hope so, when the fingers unfurl. And you can use a soft fist, you can use your heel of hand. So to do myofascial to biceps here, what we can do, relax, is I'll start by with the arm bent, just so I can get an idea of how tender it is. And I'll lean in. And I can either just do a nice dry glide, or I can do a pin and stretch by extending the elbow, pulling the muscle again underneath the fascial sheath. I could also use my heel of hand. I don't use my forearm much on the arms because I think that's a bit of bit of overkill. We can <clears throat> do a myofascial release by using a spread. It's okay. And we can do that same uh, spreading myofascial that we did in the forearms. This time, this hand won't be working. It'll just be holding the ulna, and it'll be my right hand going across the extensor group. And again, I use my body and my body weight to move the stroke instead of using muscle strength. And just like we did with the flexors, we can hold the wrist proximal to the wrist joint. And I can do a soft fist, which is always nice, especially for massage therapists. To get arm work this specific is just a treat. Pressure okay? Mm -hmm. Hair pullers? So we can also use our fingertips and I'll be working uh, from the elbow to the wrist to engage all the extensors. And I can either just keep it as a plain old dry glide or I can get some active movement into it by having the client bring the fingers and wrist back towards me in extension. 
And so again, what he's doing is pulling the muscles, they'll be contracting and being pulled underneath the fascial sheath that I'm working in the other direction. Go ahead. Fantastic, back down. And back up, please. Super, and back down. So we can apply the oil just like uh, we always do for the upper extremity. I'll hold the wrist so that I can take the stroke all the way up under the neck. It's not necessary for this particular lesson, but old habits die young, hard. And then I'll start to work on biceps. And you can see we're getting a nice color hyperemia in there. And maybe what I'll do, and when, for me, when working biceps, it's important that the palm is up so that the biceps is totally exposed to me. If I hold it down, we get a little medial rotation and I don't get to see it quite as well. And I can strip biceps either with my fingers, with my thumb, or I can do a, a strip and stretch by extending the elbow again. Pressure okay? Now, as we did for the shoulder tendonitis lesson to get coracobrachialis, and it's not really relevant to today's lesson, I'll displace biceps laterally, and my thumb will be on coracobrachialis as it comes into the coracoid process. <clears throat> I can strip brachialis by displacing bicep medially and getting on top of the humerus and stripping brachialis. I can transition into the forearm where the brunt of my work's gonna be. And now we can start to really do a nice stripping sequence and start to work. You can see we're separating brachialis from the other extensor muscles. And right now I'm not on the muscle, I'm just separating it so it can work individually as well as in concert with the other muscles. And then I'll just incrementally work my way laterally. And now we're on extensor carpi radialis. Then we'll work our way into extensor digitorum. There's usually a trigger point right in there, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you hold that eight to 12 seconds with sustained compression. And we'll flush that out and work our way more laterally into extensor carpi ulnaris. And anytime you, you know, come across and find trigger points, just hang out. <clears throat> Flush it out. Another way of doing that is I'll hold the wrist with my outside hand, in this case, my left hand, so that my right hand lays nice and my right thumb lays flat and clean on the extensors. And I can just start to flush it first and then I'll turn it more of it into a stripping stroke by using the edge of my thumb. And we could also, if we wanted to, put the muscle on the slack by extending the wrist, stripping it, and then flexing the wrist, creating another strip and stretch. How does that feel? Amazing. We can do cross fiber friction and with the same position and my thumb will lay across the, the muscles and I can just squeeze in and start to, you see the muscle pop up there. Um, we can come up into the epicondyle. And really start to flush it out, separate it. <laughs> So after that, we can just change hands, turn the hip palm up, and now we've got the flexors that we can work. And you see the scar here, you have metal implants, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you might feel some metal implants, and that's okay to work on those. Uh, the client will let you know if it's painful. And then again, as I go from just that, I'm gonna now strip with the edge of my thumb towards the medial epicondyle or golfer's elbow, if that's where the inflammation is. <clears throat> and usually right about in here, this is pronator teres. Um, and so we can 
do a trigger point in here, relax. And I can just put my thumb into it. It's about a, a couple soon distal to the elbow crease and just work my thumb in there. Is that tender? Mm -hmm. And then if I want to increase the tenderness, I'll just pronate the arm into my thumb and hold that again, eight to 12 seconds. Then we can flush it out. If I want to strip it, I'll start with it pronated, putting pronator teres on the slack. And then I will strip towards the medial epicondyle while supinating the arm. Reset, pronate, strip, supinate. Okay. <clears throat> We can take the work into the wrist and come along, and this is great for any, this is good for uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, it's great for any tendonitis in the elbow or wrist, just frictioning along the carpals. And a lot of times you might feel a carpal slip back into place, that's perfectly all right. And then we can turn the wrist palm up and work the carpals here. And then do some hand work. We can work our way into the hand. And just working the hand is great. So many people don't get it worked very often. So I'll just traction the fingers. And then there's lots of different ways. You could just stretch the palmar surface with your fingers behind the hand like this. Or you can turn the hand palm up. And what I like to do is put both my pinkies between the ring and middle finger of the client and then weave my fingers in between there. And that allows the fingers to lift on the back of the hand, stretching the palmar surface and now spreading that palmar surface, which a lot of people love, massage therapists love it a lot. What I wanna do uh, for the tense and relax is you wanna make sure the elbow is straight. You want, don't want it hyperextended. So, I will stabilize the elbow so I can ensure that it's straight. With a soft fist, I will flex his wrist, stretching the extensors. Once I find the end point, does that feel like a stretch? A mm -hmm. little bit. Okay. Then I will back off a little bit, ask him to breathe in, and as he exhales, bring his wrist up towards the ceiling against my resistance, for a count of eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, release. Take a cleansing breath. And then on the exhale, we can ex increase the stretch. It's, it's pretty important that you keep the fingers uh, involved in the soft fist, because if you don't, then it takes out some of the muscles across the elbow joint. So if you can keep a soft fist as you do it, that would be beneficial to the client. And you'll do this three times.